A massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. On the surface, there's seemingly very little as patronising as the process of getting to grips with dreams, Media Molecule's new player-driven game development tool, which spends an unbelievable amount of time congratulating you for performing the simplest actions most games want to get you past as quickly as possible, patting you on the head and saying, there's a good boy, didn't you do well, for finally grasping the monumental task of moving the camera. That said, after spending multiple hours in the game's seemingly unending tutorials, you realise Dreams has to keep that positive reinforcement up, as you desperately try to internalise the daunting amount of information it throws your way, no matter how patronising it might sound, because despite its twee, borderline infantile demeanour, this game does not mess around. Rarely have games had to tutorialise concepts as huge as character and environment design, gameplay design, animation, these fields unto themselves that people spend years of their lives learning, yet Dreams has to find a way to teach you this stuff in as condensed and fun a way as possible, and even then, developing a working knowledge of this toolset only heightens my own biggest hurdle to creativity in this game, crippling option paralysis. What do you actually do with these tools when the possibilities are so endless? This is fully exemplified in the moments where you'll be doing a simple tutorial to construct a race by placing items in the world one second, then the next you've stumbled onto the sound menu, haphazardly placing a trigger on the floor, and suddenly you're half an hour deep into this entire digital audio workstation, using your controller to comb through a library of what are essentially user-generated VSTs, composing, performing, and recording a soundtrack with piano samples in B-flat mixolydian, and even then you know you haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what this thing will allow you to do in terms of capturing and manipulating sound. Did I mention this is just the audio menu? I guess it's a testament to how comprehensive this game creation tool actually is that my chest is tightening up just thinking about it. With all this in mind, Dreams needs to be absolutely sure you know the fundamentals of moving around. With all the strange combinations of motion controls and button modifiers and patronising head pats that entails, before progressing to the real meat of its experience, dropping you headfirst into the difficult and often unavoidable realities of what it takes to create a fully fledged video game. I'm not kidding when I say this now long-term project has gotten me thinking about games, the people who make them, and the way we discuss them a little differently. When I created a daft spiral staircase out of stone platforms, a process that took me nearly 20 minutes, the feeling was similar to beating a boss in any action game, a challenging test of everything I'd learned up to that point, requiring me to be as precise as possible in my execution, and it still came out janky as all hell. A staircase, a minuscule object that maybe forms one tiny part of one level in maybe a larger whole, but in itself is still a complex series of textures and geometry and rules involving multiple different disciplines all working in tandem that if everything functions correctly, a player will never pay a moment's notice to. And all that only happens if you can muster the creative energy and patience to flesh out a bunch of similarly minor elements into a grander vision. All this is to say that if there's one thing Dream has hammered home to me beyond all else, it's that making games is goddamn hard work and the people who make them deserve a whole lot more respect than they tend to get. You know, even on the rare occasion it feels warranted for me to tear into a game on this channel, there's always a part of me that feels the need to acknowledge that I'm not coming at this from some point of expertise here, that even the least enjoyable games take a lot of time and effort from a lot of different people to produce. I guess it's a response to some of the games discussion I've seen online over the years, a not insignificant amount of which seems to revel in this idea that the people who create games, whether as part of a massive AAA developer creating these stupefyingly detailed worlds, or a small indie team doing what they can with limited resources, are somehow lazy. You know, the ones slaving away literally day and night under what we know are often incredibly hostile conditions, yet one system might fail to meet players' expectations or a glitch might momentarily stall their progress, and suddenly accusations start to fly about how the devs just couldn't be bothered making a good game without much thought paid to the multitude of logistical factors out with their control that could have contributed to that outcome. 
Dreams absolutely, enthusiastically lays waste to this notion by posing the challenge. If you can do better, please try. Here are all the tools and lessons you need to effectively do so at a fraction of the price you'd normally pay, and you can do it from the comfort of your own couch. Media Molecule has tried to make this process as streamlined as they possibly can. And the results? Well, while the creativity on show has been nothing short of impressive, with so many cool little ideas all available to drop in and play already, all showing a real imaginative flair, the limitations are pretty readily apparent, at least at this early stage. There's little here that's going to grab you for more than a few minutes or so, the most fully fleshed out ideas seem to be drawing pretty heavily from existing IPs, and even the ocean of memes that make up a good portion of Dream's offering right now will have taken a daunting amount of work. Hell, Media Molecule's own effort, using the tools to produce their own short experience in the form of Art's Dream, might not be much of an actual game itself, but after using these tools, you know how much blood, sweat and tears went into painstakingly crafting every single pixel of its short runtime. It is absurdly polished compared to almost anything else in the Dreamiverse. In fact, it's so incongruous from anything else that I actually think it goes against the team's intentions, to show you just what you can achieve with all these tools. All I know after playing it is, I ain't creating anything like Art's Dream anytime soon, that's for sure. Because hey, game development is hard! There is a major caveat to this statement though, namely that maybe these tools just aren't as easy to use effectively as they might seem on the surface. For all that it's incredible how tightly Media Molecule managed to cram all of these functions onto a PS4 controller, there's no denying that the simple act of moving around a level, even with hours of practice, can be a pretty clunky experience, as you awkwardly contort your hands in a frustrating attempt to finagle one background block on top of another. It's an experience that you have to imagine would become a fair bit easier where these functions map to a traditional keyboard and mouse setup as you'd use in a more established game engine. That said, it's not as if by making the process more intuitive, you necessarily make it any less dense. To alleviate this, Dreams provides various collaboration options, whether it's allowing players access to user-generated assets to feature in their own levels, or assigning other players as full-blown designers alongside your own efforts. That said, this still requires sourcing people who are as passionate about your idea as you are, and willing to focus on one particular area in order for your makeshift team to work effectively. You have to communicate with others delineate roles and make sure different parts of the project are working as they should be. Congratulations, you're now a producer, a role which opens up a whole new can of logistical worms. See, Media Molecule has taken a lot of truly admirable steps with Dreams to democratise the process of game development as well as inspire creativity in its players. It also acts as a reminder that there's no easy way to make a game. If you want to produce something truly groundbreaking, you likely aren't going to do it totally on your own, and it certainly isn't going to be without its difficulties. As many devs will tell you, with the complexity of games as a medium, it's a wonder anything gets shipped at all in this industry. This is just not something you can pull off if you're lazy, and I really think this is a point anyone who has played Dreams will have to concede. And look, I'm not saying I'm going to be stopping on every staircase in every game saying a prayer for the devs who willed it into existence. And yes, of course it's still fine to talk critically about games. All I'm saying is that if there was ever a time for trying to understand and appreciate the struggles of others, to be a little kinder to one another, it's now. And if dreams can, at the very least, provide an insight into the complexities and struggles of making games, to contextualise that discussion, even if it doesn't produce the next generation defining masterpiece, then I'll still think of it as a major success. And speaking of building something new, why not take this opportunity to build yourself up with today's sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives, where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. It's a new year, a new decade, why not make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. What you find just might surprise and inspire you. With so much to explore, real projects to create and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. If you've played Dreams and find yourself interested in the animation side of things, there's a lot you might be able to take away from a class like Simple Character Animation by Fraser Davidson, which will take you through the whole process of designing, building, rigging, and finally animating your character. 
What's more, Skillshare offers classes designed for real life, so you can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. It's way more affordable than pricey in-person classes or workshops, an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 people who click my link in the description can get a two-month free trial, so there's no risk to checking it out for yourself and you'll really be helping the channel in the process. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and I hope you all enjoyed this piece about dreams. I'd like to sincerely thank my patrons for making videos like this possible. I know these are incredibly weird times, so I am even more grateful for your support than I normally am, if that's even possible. You absolutely allow me to keep doing this and rest assured I will be doing my damnedest to make it worth your while during this whole mess. Other people's content has helped me a great deal in times of stress and hopefully I can ease that a little for some of you too. Needless to say, if you can support the show on Patreon, you'll be directly allowing me to continue and I'll never be able to thank you enough for that. You are the absolute best. An extra special thank you to Mark B. Writing, Artyom Vitsiuk, Leia Cinello, Constantino Sakinis, Henry Milek, Edward Clayton Andrews, Hebe Amore, Rob, Bryce Snyder, Tommy Carver Chaplin, David Bjork, Lucas, Dallas Keane, William Fielder, my dad, Timothy Jones, The Nameless Guy, Ham Migas, Samuel Pickens, Shardfire, Anna Pimentel, Jesse Ryan, Justin Holderness, and Charlie Yang. And with that, this has been another episode of Writing on Games. Thank you so much for watching. Stay at home, wash your hands, and I will see you next time.